occupation of the MGTOW, I think this is where we are now. Um, the funny thing is, I, there's people say, well, fem feminism is going to keep growing, blah, blah, blah. So is um, Islam. You're welcome to both of them. Um, at the same time, MGTOW is going to keep growing as well. Um, one of the things I do recognize out of the MGTOW side, though, is a lot of what's coming up now, which is why I see this as a growth environment, is, as I said, the problems originally started in the 60s and have been sort of rolling forward, is that we're now um, where those kids that have come from broken families or whatever are the adults. And they are the generation now that is affected by this and as such are aware of what went on. Because as I said before, I mean, I mean, an example of this is a, a, a kid that's 19 years old, not seen his father since he was about six, goes and says to his father, now he's old enough, and wants to confront him about why he didn't spend time and why he didn't do that. And then he finds out things like, your, your mother moved house. Your mother put an order against me getting in touch with you. Your mother did this and that. And then it's like, but she told me that you, you just left. And then you find out that was a completely fabricated lie. Um, and those guys recognize what's been going on. In the same time, they, even if they had a bad father, do you know what they recognize? The broken relationship. And at the same time, they may say, oh, my mother struggled or whatever. I said, did your mum work? She actually worked 16 hours a week at Tesco as well. Didn't work 40, worked 16. Um, and at the same time, where was your dad? Oh, well, my dad, my dad left when I was, was little, but he also recognised that if they, even if you come from a non council estate family, that somebody is paying the mortgage for the other house, regardless, you know, at the end of the day, wherever the kid is, the kid will end up with the, the lion's share, which is predominantly with the woman due to the way the legal system set up. Um, it's not based on finance, because if it was based on finance, then we'd be having the reverse conversation that most of these kids are with their fathers. Um, because obviously, when you see these things that get skewed, where they say, well, men do better off after a divorce and whatever, with their salaries, they won't put in the, the deductions often incur going to their ex-partner anyway, um, which is not a salary, it's an income. But at the same time, that's a deduction from the salary of the guy, but also their career has continued on its original path, regardless. Um, their spending power is what's changed. But ultimately, these young kids that are now young adults are seeing this stuff. And I can say that Dad used to live in the bed sit when we had the three bedroom house and everything else. And the the stuff that around the access and stuff, they may not have known it as a kid, but if they went and approached their father and asked them about it, they would get the truth. And when you start seeing that, you start to think, this isn't going to happen to me. And it's not just a selfish thing about, well, I'm, you know, because a lot of things this is like, push well, may, maybe me tell people are self-absorbed and all this. If they don't want kids because of the, the same thing happening to their kids, it's actually thinking more beneficial in the fact that their concern is that their children would end up in this bad environment because of the way things are today. As such, it's unfair on children, which actually, even if they wanted kids, they have now admitted, if they do, you know, because not everybody's the same, um, that their thoughts are, even if they want these kids, they would rather not have their kids put through that hardship and heartbroken split family scenario, etc, etc. Um, so I do think a lot of guys haven't changed in the sense, like myself, I'm very traditional. I always have been. I'm not religious, but I am traditional. I'm eth ethics, morals, etc. Um, and I don't have policies for them. It's just the uh, just a moral compass, I suppose. Um, that's why I left Carillion. I've seen the corruption in Carillion. I've seen the stuff they were up to. I've seen the nepotism. I've seen some of the stuff that has led to their downfall years ahead of when it happened. And they tried to put a gagging order on me. They tried to threaten me with legal action um, for stuff that, quite simply, is now becoming public knowledge. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's me. I have a moral compass, and it's often not the best thing to have in business. Uh, but ultimately, this is why I can see and understand the MGTOW stuff, because uh, I, I know a lot of unhappy men, and I know a lot of unhappy kids, and I know a lot of kids that are struggling to talk to both parents and trying not to make a favorite of either in case it creates some sort of friction. Um, you've got to understand that that generation is the generation that's coming up now and it's not just a case of well they're, they're going to be happily married and whatever. They're asking a lot more questions. They've seen a lot more damage and it's a continuation that is not going away but this is why MGTOW is actually growing. I'm surprised I haven't seen more from the female side, not from feminism. Feminism seems to have a chip on its shoulder about something every day. I'm talking about women actually turning around and feeling that they're being displaced as well because if there's a, a lack of interest for men, why isn't there enough women asking why? Because you've got a lot of feminists that are just saying, well, that's just tough. But I'm sure there's a lot of women out there actually asking why. Why doesn't anybody want me or whatever? Because that doesn't even get brought up. And it's not good. It's not for the guys to actually bring that up. That's for women to do. And there's nothing wrong with actually having some emotional um, feelings or things like that. Because guess what? Women are actually supposed to have more than that than men. Unlike TV adverts and TV movies where everyone seems to be an emotional wreck for some reason. I have no idea what's happened with TV. I don't understand Netflix. Netflix seems to be a noodle um, alphabet soup type of mix of emotional and gay and bisexual and everything TV shows. I do not understand what's going on there. But it's a prime example of change that often didn't really need to happen in the sense that nobody was arguing with them. It was just a case of, I don't want to pay to watch gay comedians in the sense going on about well I hate men or all that sort of why am I paying for that sort of garbage I'm not interested they can go on Netflix and do uh, sorry, they, sorry go on Netflix they can go on YouTube and do that stuff for free but anyway guys thanks for watching